Samsung's Galaxy smartphones all come packing a tasty bit of Android, but they're also given that unique Samsung look and feel by the One UI launcher. This is basically like a custom skin of the Korean giant's own creation. And it doesn't just change up the aesthetics either, it adds in a buttload of extra bonus features, quite a few of which are well worth checking out. Now fresh new Sammy smartphones like this here, Galaxy A51, come with the latest version of One UI version 2 already stuffed on there. And of course, if you've got an older Galaxy phone with One UI, you can expect an update to version 2 imminently. Now, this doesn't really change up the aesthetics very much at all, but it does tweak and add some great new features in there. So I thought if you're new to One UI version 2 or just One UI in general, here's a run through of some of my tips and tricks for some of the best features on there. And for more of the latest to greatest tech, please do pause, subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. So first up, are you sick of seeing the same tired old photos of your boring family flashing up in your smartphone screen every time you go to unlock it? You are? Well, One UI has you covered. One of the fresh new features found in One UI version 2 is the dynamic lock screens, which flashes up a fresh new pic every time you go to unlock the device. To get involved, you'll need to dive into your Galaxy smartphone settings and then go to lock screen, and then from there, wallpaper services. This will be set to none by default, but you can quickly swap to the dynamic lock screen with a quick tap here, and then set it up by hitting the little cog icon next to it. Right now, you've only got a choice of five categories for your dynamic lock screen images, landscapes, life, food, pets, and art. All pretty self-explanatory stuff, so just select whichever category you fancy. It'll download via Wi-Fi or mobile data if you've selected that option, and then you'll be good to go. Samsung will apparently update the set of images every couple of weeks or so, so the collection doesn't get stale. Great stuff. And while you're in that lock screen settings menu as well, it's worth pointing out that the always on display is configured from in there too. And One UI version two does add some further customization options to the always on display. So give that little tappy tap tap and you can actually schedule the always on display. So it's not on all night long, just draining battery life unnecessarily. And you can also change up the clock style as well to change up the look and feel, including adding your own GIF if you like. Ah, happy times. And thanks to a combination of Android 10 and One UI version two, you've also got full control of your notification exactly how they pop up and bother you. Most of this management is of course done through the notification section of the settings menu. You can dive into all of your individual apps and see exactly how they can pester you. So for instance in Twitter you'll get notifications for direct messages, emergency alerts, all that kind of shenanigans unless you actually knock that stuff off. However there are also other notifications options tucked away inside of the One UI menus that you might miss otherwise. So for instance if you head to the advanced features and then go to smart pop-up view this will then allow you to get your notifications from specific apps and a Facebook Messenger style bubble that pops up on screen. You can then interact with that notification without having to actually minimize whatever you were doing at the time when it popped through. So it's good for a bit of multitasking. And another notifications feature you might not be aware of is the edge lighting feature as well. Go into display and then edge screen and you'll find it within there. And the edge lighting is very similar to the smart pop-up feature. It basically allows you to open up the notification in a kind of bubble type thing on screen over the top of whatever you are doing at the time so again great for multitasking. You can choose the actual style of the edge light notifications some of them are fairly discreet and some of them really really try and grab your attention. You can even play around with colors and transparency levels to get it set up exactly how you like. Now when you're eventually laid out on your deathbed, chances are you won't be ruined the fact that you didn't spend more time arguing with strangers on Twitter or watching more twerking teens on TikTok. And that is where the digital wellbeing feature comes in, helping you to manage the time spent in each of your apps like some sort of digital nanny thing. Now you find this feature quite easily in the One UI settings menu, you just scroll down to digital wellbeing and parental controls. And in there you'll get a full in-depth breakdown of exactly what you spent your time or indeed wasted your time doing, complete with the number of unlocks, number of notifications that have popped in and exactly what apps you've been using. If you scroll down a little bit you'll get the app timers feature. This is pretty self-explanatory. So say for instance you're spending far too much time reading depressing stuff on Twitter each day, you can limit yourself to as little as a minute if you like. That means you get precisely one minute per day to spend on Twitter and that clock will reset at the end of a 24 hour period at midnight. Now, of course, at any point you can simply cheat by going in and removing the timer, but uh, never mind. And I also highly recommend checking out that focus mode feature in there as well, which allows you to basically cull any distractions from any apps on your smartphone, just let you chill out a bit or maybe smash out that essay on 17th century agricultural techniques. It's very easy to set up your own custom focus mode. I've set up mine right here, which allows me access to only two apps when active, Amazon Music and Audible, culls all the messaging and all that kinds of shenanigans so I can just switch off from the world 
pure bliss. With that active, as you can see, all your other app icons are greyed out. You can tap them as much as you bloody like. They ain't gonna open, only the ones that you previously specified. And if you're gonna be headed into something like a meeting as well, where again, you don't want your phone buzzing or ringing in your pocket, then what you can do is dive into settings and go to the top to sound and vibration. Now in here, you can of course mute your Galaxy smartphone as usual. You'll also notice a little feature popping up underneath that says temporary mute. Now this is perfect if you're going into a meeting or a movie something where you know how long it will last. You can fully customize how long it goes on for and then at the end of that duration the phone will unmute again just in case you forget to do it yourself. And in that way you won't find yourself missing out on anything important because your phone is staying silent. And if you're lucky enough to have your very own Sprog it's worth pointing out that in that digital well-being section you'll also find some pretty damn nifty parental controls. This allows you to set limitations on exactly what your little kitty winks can get up to on their Galaxy smartphone including app time limits and the like. And even better, you can remotely monitor exactly what they're up to on your own smartphone using Google's Family Link app. It's dead easy to set up and it's well worth getting onto if you're a little bit paranoid about what your kids are getting up to on their handset. Alternatively, if you're just going to be passing off your Galaxy smartphone to your treasured little cherubs for five minutes to get them to shut the hell up while you go off to the bathroom to lock yourself in there and have a bit of a cry, then definitely check out the Kids Corner feature. You'll find this hidden away in the notifications panel as one of those quick shortcut icons. And what this basically is, is a fun, colourful environment where your kids can play games and learn stuff and basically not crock your smartphone unless of course they accidentally drop it on a concrete floor, in which case can't really help you there I'm afraid. But hey, at least they won't be accidentally posting your d pics up on Twitter or anything like that, so that's a bonus. And your kid can't get back to your main desktop without your verification using your pin or your fingerprint, so basically they'll have to either cut off your hand or somehow manage to prize that vital information out of you. Now one of the most well-stocked sections of the One UI settings menu is the display settings. You'll find it absolutely packed full of great little tools and shenanigans. So for instance, the new dark mode, which is all improved now, works across all of your Samsung and Google first party apps and menus. And inside of the display settings is also where you set up the gesture navigation by diving into the navigation bar section. Having an actual virtual navigation bar down there at the bottom of the screen feels kind of clunky and outdated now that we're into Android 10. Those gesture navigations work so well. So definitely recommend turning those on. If you dive into more options as well, you can set up these precise gesture navigations that are supporters. I like the swipe from sides and bottom. This basically allows you to swipe all the way up into the center of the screen in order to access recent apps. When you're inside of an app, you can swipe from the side in order to go back at any point. And you can also just do a quick swipe up from the bottom in order to go back to your desktops. And it's great to see that you can actually set the sensitivity of that back gesture as well. I find myself occasionally activating it by accident without this, but as you can see, I've just bumped up the sensitivity and now I don't do it when I don't need to. And because, let's face it, Galaxy smartphones tend to be a bit on the big and cumbersome side, it's great to see that Samsung still supports that one-handed mode here in One UI version 2. Now, if you've ditched the navigation bar at the bottom, you can activate that one-handed mode basically by swiping your thumb down the very center of the display right at the bottom edge there. And as you can see there, everything's shrunken down and a lot less awkward to use one-handed. Great stuff. And for a little bit of extra one-handed help as well, just pinch it onto your desktops and go to the home screen settings. And you'll find in there one option, swipe down for notification panel. Just make sure that is active. And then when you're on your desktops, you can just swipe down and pull down that notifications bar with arms reach all the way to the very top. Always awkward when you've only got one hand free. Another just quick tip and trick here for One UI version two as well, which now supports the Apple style cursor control. So if you're busy typing out a message, you want to get the cursor back a little bit just to correct a mistake. All you need to do is hold on that space bar and then as you can see, basically turns the keyboard into a sort of makeshift touchpad. So you can get the cursor in exactly the position you need to go back and make any changes, correct any little problems. And last of all, if you've got yourself a Galaxy smartphone and you haven't checked out the Bigsby routines feature yet, I highly recommend jumping on board. You'll find this squirreled away in the advanced features section of the settings. It's right there at the top. And what Bigsby routines does is it basically automates a whole bunch of the boring admin stuff on your smartphone based on the likes of the time of the day, your current location, things like that. You've got a whole bunch of presets on there, so plenty of inspiration. So for instance, say that we are driving. 
First up, you have to set the if condition. So for instance, you can have the smartphone realize that you're driving by the fact that you're connected to your car's smart system. And if that's the case, for instance, you can have it so your smartphone automatically reads out any notifications that pop in, so you're not distracting yourself, you're not taking your eyes off the road. It's an impressively flexible tool, so it's definitely well worth diving in there and seeing exactly what you can get set up. And that right there is my tips and tricks guide for Samsung's One UI version two. So you should be expecting the latest One UI, probably with a few extra little bonus tweaks coming to the new Galaxy S20 smartphones which will be launching in just a week's time so stay tuned for full in-depth coverage of all of that hands-on shenanigans of course and for more on the latest greatest tech please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell cheers